This is the hopper fly that I use for targeting perch and bass here in central Texas. It is a great fly to use in the warmer months and it's fun to watch the blow ups on the top of the water. Using a size eight, we're gonna get that in the vise and get started. I like to use a, a green thread for this fly because I'm using green foam. Just choose whatever color thread corresponds to the color foam that you're using. The foam that I'm gonna get uh, is it's just from Walmart. It's super cheap. You get a lot of it. You get a lot of different colors too, so you can tie all different kinds of combinations. The width of the foam that I'm cutting is roughly this, the width of the gap of the hook from the shank. And you want to cut the back of it into the shape of like an ellipse to kind of make it look like an abdomen of a bug. What I'm doing here is I'm bending the material so that I can see what size it's going to look like when I put the eyes on there. It might take a couple attempts for you to figure out what works for you, but I always try to make it the same diameter in which the eyes that I'm using is going to be. And you'll see what, what I mean by that later. You're going to secure it to the hook, leaving kind of a long end on front that you're going to fold over eventually. Just make sure it's nice and secure on the shank so it's not going anywhere. You can reinforce it with glue if you like. Then you're going to take a second strip that's a little bit smaller, roughly the same width, and cut it to be about two times the length of the hook. You're also going to shape the butt end of this into like an abdomen shape and place it directly on top of the foam that is already there. Now you're going to take that cleaned up strip of foam, tie it on to where the back abdomen part is matching the, bot the bottom part so that they're on top of one another. And then you're going to use a little bit of glue to secure them together. If you don't do this, it's not the end of the world, but that piece of foam is going to be flapping around in the wind and it just makes a lot of noise and I don't, I'd rather have it secured down. Take some silly legs. I'm actually going to cut one strand so that it turns into two and then you're gonna loosely wrap it in so that you can actually pull one of the strands over instead of having to tie in twice. But sometimes I actually tie in twice because I think it's easier because a lot of times I'll tie it too tight and then I'll break one of the legs off, but I didn't do that here. Now you're gonna get some hackle. I had tied it pretty far up on the shank, but it's because I've got a really long piece of hackle. As long as it's secure, it doesn't really matter where you tie it in. Wrap that around and be careful to miss the silly legs, otherwise they'll get caught up in there and that'll ruin the way that it looks. So this takes a little while. Just know that when I'm tying these, for YouTube, I try to pick like the one that I did best. I'll make several iterations and film them and then use the one that has the least amount of mistakes. But I've tied several hundred of these flies and a lot of them have imperfections. So they'll still catch fish even if they're missing a leg or the hair's off, it doesn't really matter. Once you tie that hackle back in, you're then gonna get some glue and you're going to get just the top of the foam so that it's got maximum grip to stay together because this fly does get a lot of abuse from small and big fish when it lands. So just make sure that it's nice and tight after you've put that glue in there. Next thing I usually do is I'm gonna trim up this front tag because if you leave it too big and too wide, the edges, when you wrap up that front flap that's facing forward, the really long stretch, it'll poke the eyes in an awkward space. So I usually will turn that into like a smaller nub. Then repeat the step of the silly lebs from the back on the front be really careful with these. They're super finicky, and actually you'll see that I accidentally rip one of these off later. Then you get bucktail. I use these for the wings, and mainly because I'm just sick of having all this brown bucktail that I don't use as much. So you can use so many different materials for this, but I'm using this bucktail because I want an excuse to get a new, a new fresh one. Snip the excess bucktail. Be careful not to snip the thread. Clean that up a little bit, and then what you're going to do is use some glue to secure the bucktail down, because if you don't, that bucktail will just fall out eventually. So that glue will seep in there and turn it into a solid one piece of bucktail. Flip over the flap. Make sure that it's big enough for your eyes, and you can measure this before tying. And you'll see what I mean by the eyes in a, here in a minute. Then I'm going to take 
my scissors and I'm gonna trim the bucktail off just at the end of the abdomen of the fly so that it kind of looks like wings. Be really careful when you're touching this up and putting the glue on for the eyes. I get these eyes off of Amazon, like literally like a thousand of them for $20. It's super cheap. Do not buy eyes at fly shops. It's not a good return on your investment. And I think what happens here is I, I got glue on the legs, which is why one of the legs falls off. But I also run into this issue of having humongous sausage fingers and had the my thumb stick to that eye. And I'll show you a trick later here where it leaves this unfortunate mark with my, your fingerprint on there. And that just doesn't look very good. But what you can do is use this UV resin to come in. And if you really dollop some resin on there, uh, it'll go away. That's where I accidentally stripped the silly leg off because it had a little bit of glue on there and I pulled too tight. So I'm tying in a new one and then, and I waited a little while so the glue would dry. So I've got that new silly leg tied in. Then I'm gonna take this indicator strip and I'm gonna tie that in as well. It's not really needed. You'll catch fish without it, but it helps for when you're looking for this fly, especially if you've cast it pretty far away. It shows up against the, a mostly green backdrop if you're fishing on the lake that I fish. You're gonna tilt that head backwards so that it exposes the eye of the hook and you're gonna do a couple of wraps to make sure that's secure. And then you do a little whip finish, tie that puppy in, and you are just about done. Now that you've got everything tied in, make sure you really tighten that thread to make it as strong as possible. You're gonna snip it off and get ready to put on some UV resin. I use a like a solar res thin and this will help get rid of the fingerprint on the eye that was stuck to my thumb, which happens more than I'd like to admit. Not only will it just make things look better, but it's also gonna give some strength to the fly. If you throw this a lot at hard surfaces and it hits trees or docks or just anything hard, uh, having that extra coat of UV resin on there is gonna help keep the eyes on there because that's one of the first things that falls off on this fly after it's taken some abuse. Make sure you've got a nice dollop of glue where all that thread is, which is just gonna help it stay together and not unwind after throwing it a bunch of times. And then next step is to trim up these legs. You can leave it as long as you want. It'll still just look buggy, uh, but some people really wanna trim. So I usually trim it to about that size. If you don't know how long to make it, just go ahead and err on the side of it being longer and then just take little bits away uh, until you reach the desired length and then I'm kind of cutting in this like v-shaped thorax type to finish off the fly stay tuned if you want to see me catch a fish thanks so it's middle of May super hot first day in the 90s here in Austin the beginning of the summer and I'm in this spot that's right below Barton Springs where there's usually a ton of people that's the case today. There's a lot of people on paddle boards, but uh, my motor broke down and so I couldn't move, but I figured, you know what? I'm gonna fish anyway. I tied on the hopper fly and I'm casting right at this area where it transitions from being shallow going into where it is deeper. And there's usually a bunch of bass and perch just sitting there waiting for things to happen. And so sure enough, I threw out a cast this was actually my second cast that I cut to, and almost instantly I get a nice big top water flop from not a very big bass, but there you go, gotta love it. So usually I try to avoid big crowds unless I'm going up into the inlet of Barton Springs. And uh, that's mainly because people will accidentally cut in front of you. Maybe they're knowingly doing it, but usually pretty, people are pretty nice and will avoid you. But things get really, really crowded when the lake gets narrow and there's just so many people that it's really frustrating with your back cast. And since it's everybody's lake, it's better to just go places where there's not a ton of folks. Uh, I actually was able to paddle my boat to shore and then I went to O'Reilly Auto Parts to get a new fuse because the reason my boat wasn't working is because my freaking fuse had burned out. So once I got that uh, all figured out, I was able to get back in and uh, go after a bunch more fish. It ended up being a great day. 
Here's some more clips of some of the perch that I caught. So I'm still on Ladybird Lake. I'm casting just below the tree line. Oh, There's so the much like seaweed hydrilla in the way that I'm actually having to aim for pockets <laughs> that have some depth. They're kind of dark green where the stuff that's more shallow is bright green. I'm using a three weight with the hopper fly just because it's a lot more fun to fight smaller fish on a smaller rod. But as, as you can see, I actually bounced this fly off of a branch and into the water and got my first perch of the day. That's kind of fun. One of my favorite way to just target perch and bass on this lake is to just let the wind take you down the side of the lake, cast constantly at the edge of the water, anywhere between like five feet and 15 feet away from the actual side of the lake. And I'll just do that for hours at a time and if, if there's no wind then I'll just use my trolling motor to kind of putt putt down the water but you really get a ton of action as long as the hydrilla all these weeds aren't too insane which lately they've been really out of hand hopefully that will get better but usually with it getting warmer outside it doesn't get better so we'll see how that affects the way that I fish but you know if you liked this video uh, please let me know in the comments. Give me a like and a subscribe. Also, oh, I yeah, love I feedback Sorry, on what I could do to improve my content. Oh. So uh, let me know what you think, right, and good. I really appreciate you watching. Thanks.